Hello everyone, I am Veos and welcome back to another Kerbal Space Program video, but this time with a space, space shuttle. shuttle. And not just any space shuttle, but an actually an, uh, an, an, an old, an old concept, NASA concept space shuttle. I remember looking at the diagram about uh, concept space shuttles when when uh, the shuttle was first being introduced and I fell in love with one of the one of the designs. It basically had the engines and all the takeoff ability um, of the craft with the shuttle itself, but the shuttle just had some extra fuel tanks that ejected on the way up. I really wish they would have taken a better look at this design because it, it looked like it would have been a lot cheaper. All you need to do is just eject the spent fuel tanks and that was it. The engines and everything, um, the shuttle, the, everything would just still be in, in one shot. So it, it was more like a two stage to orbit craft. But anyway, in KSP, we needed to figure out how to how to build this thing. But I just didn't want to, I just didn't want to do, you know, hardly anything. I wanted to do some work. So I figured if it could carry a 36 ton payload to orbit, then that was good enough for me. So while building it, I made the wings, you know, the the delta with the wingy tips on the tips, and I can't really think of what the frick it's called. Not this early in the morning anyway. Made sure it had a dihedral design, all that jazz. Unfortunately, the wings did kind of clip into the uh, cargo bay, but uh, not that bad. It wasn't that bad. It, it still left room for the cargo. I tried to make it so it didn't clip into the cargo bay, but unfortunately it just looked ugly at the end. And so I went ahead and just shoved everything in towards the bottom. I wanted to make sure that the the design uh, had, well, the, the shuttle itself had some fuel on it so that after the fuel tank injection, it, it had plenty of Delta V to get the rest of the way up there. And the first design I was going to launch vertically, you know, like an actual shuttle launch. So I was going to build a tower and, and, and a deck and everything for it. But after launch, after launch, after launch, after launch, I started finding out that I did not have enough fuel to get into orbit. It was becoming so heavy as I was adding in more and more fuel that it got to the point where there was just not enough engines to lift the thing off the ground. I thought about adding even more engines, but that would start to look bad on the actual design itself. Sure, I could have added more engines. I could have added more weight. I could have added more fuel and it would eventually been able to take off vertically and get into orbit, but that would have just looked ugly. I'm pretty sure that the sleek design that I was going for would have disappeared fairly quickly. And then that's when it hit me. It finally, finally freaking, freaking hit, hit me. me. See, I love building SSTOs that are rocket powered because they're so easy to get into space. Yeah, compared to jets and rocket combinations or even rapiers, it, it, it's, it's a very fuel hungry and it can get kind of bulky but they get into space so so easily and elegantly it's like magic for a rocket ssto all you gotta do is pull up at 40 40 degrees and at a certain altitude hit prograde each vehicle of course being different so some might go into prograde earlier than others but that's basically it boom prograde space done best part is a lot of the lifting is actually being uh supplied by the wings instead of the engines like a rocket taking off vertically so most most of your fuel in Delta V is being used to not only gain height but also gain speed at the same time. Whereas in the beginning of a launch, most of the Delta V and fuel for a regular regular rocket is being used just to lift the entire heavy payload off the ground for a little ways before finally doing a gravity turn, a very slow gravity turn. So most of the fuel in a regular rocket is being used to lift the vehicle up and not actually gain a whole lot of speed until you know, it starts tilting at an extreme angle. Whereas a rocket space plane, on the other hand, as soon as you leave the runway, it's already at a 45 degree angle. So you're gaining a whole lot of speed and altitude at the same time. And a lot of the lift is coming from the wings to lift the entire craft up. So by comparison, you're actually saving fuel rather than burning it off the bat just to lift the entire thing off the ground. So that's what I did. I just grabbed the already built shuttle and took it off of its vertical launch pad put it on the runway i even added more weight when it came to wings and stuff in order to help with lift and i launched it and guess what it freaking got into orbit albeit with hardly any fuel left but that was because of the fact that i needed to tweak the actual flight plan of the thing so after a couple of flight tests i found out that it's uh, about 7,000 meters high uh, i would go ahead and click prograde and that was perfect however i wasn't loving the fact that the little wing tips that I added to the fuel tanks. I mean, it looked cool, but it just it didn't really 
It wasn't like the design that I remember seeing. I was thinking about putting canards on the actual space shuttle itself, but I'm I'm not a big canard up in the front guy unless it's like some sort of uh, fighter craft or whatnot. It, yeah, it looks cool. I get it, but at the same time, I'm I really like the old school non canard look. That's just me. I try to avoid doing that when I can, but if I can't, then I try to make it look cool. However, in this instance, what I did was I just took some wings and I put them right in the front and the tips of the actual fuel tanks in order to get that extra lift that I needed. Well, not lift, but you know, to be able to move the center of lift closer to the center of mass so it could take off a lot better. Now, one of the problems I was having, of course, was the fact that after uh, the ejection of the fuel tanks, it would start to wobble. And that was, of course, primarily because of the fact that the center of thrust and mass were off enough to the point where it was, it was having problems controlling it after fuel tank injection. So I solved this by putting what essentially is like maneuvering thrusters kind of like what the shuttle has but you know bigger i guess <laughs> once the fuel tanks ejected you after you hit the space bar it would activate these top engines as well which had just enough thrust to keep it from wobbling so bad i also took the elevons and uh, tweaked them to so they're not so responsive and that helped out a lot too after that i was having a problem with the fuel tanks running into each other after ejection um you know in ksp it's like man whatever i'm not i'm not worried about it but in my case it was it was it was it was grinding at my gears man i wanted a clean nice ejection so i would test it try again test it try again put some more of those separatron engine doohickeys on there test it try again and again and again finally i got the dang thing to work to be honest i could probably cut back on some of the fuel on those separatron ejection engine doohickeys but uh it's fine next up was of course testing the re-entry of this thing had to figure out the right angle for the probe core or the reentry probe core had to figure out um, how steep I could go into the atmosphere after a couple of tests I found out that this thing can actually damn near stop on a dime what I mean by that is that usually I can go into the app I usually when, I, when I'm re-entering I lower my periapsis down to about 45,000 meters but in this instance I tested it out like minus 50,000 meters for periapsis and lo and behold she didn't burn up or blow up she was perfect so that tells me that I could literally literally stop right over, you know, the mountains of uh, the KSC and just dive in and land perfectly if I really, 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 really want to. Now, yes, during a uh, descent, I was testing out different flight paths of this thing and it's definitely not a SSTO. It's, it's, it's not a glider by any means. Well, it does glide, but you know what I mean. It's a flying brick on approach. The center of mass and center of lift are so close together that it's just smarter to dive into the atmosphere until I reach the very thick atmosphere before I start gliding forward. Because if I don't, and I try to glide it like if I'm flying a freaking airplane, then it'll stall and it'll start flat spinning. Which is still cool that it, it calculates it. So, you know, when you when you see stuff that happens in real life, happen in the simulator, it's like, oh, that is so cool. I'm probably the only guy in KSP that gets psyched out when I see a uh, flat spin occurring in KSP. Because I'm like, hey, that happens in real life. Look at that. I know, I'm dumb. So after I figured that out, I went ahead and tweaked the design just a little bit more. I didn't like the fact that there was no heat guards underneath the rocket engines, because even though in KSP, the engines themselves are capable of withstanding re-entry heat, which is uh, <laughs> not really realistic. In reality, the um, engines are guarded by some sort of heat shield of some type in order to not blow the bells off of the damn rocket engines. Add some more lights, more fuel, more flags. Well, no, not, not fuel, but you know, more flags. I just put the name Delta on the side because it was the only flag I really um, I had. I could have put anything on there. I could have named it anything, but you know, it just felt nice-ish. I even tried flying it in a cockpit view and it, it was pretty cool. It's too bad I had to zoom out in order to click on program and stuff like that but other than that it was, was kind of cool there's a mod out there where you can walk around the cabin and all that good stuff i i have not yet downloaded it but i intend to so stay tuned for that i wonder if it's on ccan but anyway there you go final product and it's it looks cool i like it i love it it's pretty cool um yeah if i had time i would definitely want to build something with it but i don't have uh time uh, i've been working weekends up to 56 60 hours a week it's 
brutal, but it pays the bills. And so, you know, until I start working for YouTube full time, that's just going to have to be the case. But anyway, if you like this video, please, please leave a like for the YouTube algorithm. And if you really, 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 really like this video, consider subscribing. I upload often, mostly Kerbal Space Program, uh, mostly SSTO stuff, space planes and whatnot. We also have a membership program. If you're interested, if you become a member, you get cool little emojis and badges and stuff next to your name. Pretty cool. Check it out. But anyway, that is it for today. Thank you so much for watching and thank you so much for being a part of this channel. Love you all. Stay safe and I'll see you in the next video. Bye for now. Bye bye.